Hi guys, welcome back. I'm so excited to have you back in the classroom again. Today we're going to be doing a really fun project. This project helps me get to know you, but it's also a great way to learn a little bit more about the history of Egypt. So since we're talking about Egypt, can anybody please raise their hand and also tell us what continent Egypt is found? So, I hope that somebody answered the question and told us that Egypt is found in Africa. That's the continent where you can find the country of Egypt. So, the Egyptian temples, the pyramids that we all know about, are on the Nile. So, the Nile is the longest river in Africa, and you can see it kind of looks like a flower. The ancient Egyptian used a language called hieroglyphics, in which they used to write. Take a look at these hieroglyphics here, and if someone could please share with the class, how is hieroglyphics different from the English that we use? I hope that someone could tell the difference and told us that hieroglyphics look a little bit more like pictures when we have a lot of letters in our language. What makes ancient Egypt interesting? is that they had, instead of kings and queens, they had what was called pharaohs. Pharaohs, or other very important people in ancient Egypt, would have something called a cartouche. So a cartouche was an oval-shaped nameplate. They would have their name in hieroglyphics on the cartouche. A cartouche could be read up and down, or it could be read from left to right. The cool thing about the cartouche is that everyone's would look a little different. Although the ancient Egyptians have obviously died out, we can still find some of their oldest temples in Egypt. Today, Egyptians live in cities just like us. Today you're going to need a few different things. You're going to need two packages of Sculpey. This is called Sculpit. So we're using an air hardening clay. This one is not the clay that is found in the earth. This is a clay that is a lot like plastic. It is synthetic, so it is not something that is from the earth. You may need some scissors. You may also need this plastic needle. This will help us carve um, into our hieroglyphics that we're going to make today. Please don't bend these too far. Um, I know that they bend a little bit, but please don't try to test it. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to open open our Sculpit packages. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to gently, gently cut off one of the sides. Now I'm not cutting into the clay, but I am cutting off one of the sides so that I can take my scissors and then poke my way through. And that way I can just peel the wrapper right off. Go ahead and do this for both of them and then give me a thumbs up to show me that you're ready to continue. Okay, so you should have two blocks of the Sculpit out and cut open. So we need to work fast because this clay will dry very, very fast. You will feel it drying in your hands. I want you to go ahead and just squeeze these two blocks together. So we need to make them into one big blob. Go ahead and just start squeezing them with your fists together. Okay, thumbs up when you have that all smashed together. Thank you. So now you need to take your little blob and you are going to kind of smash that down into a pancake on the table a few times. You don't need to snack, uh, smack it super flat. Just give it some pressure until it's basically a pancake. So now I need to cut the shape of my cartouche out of this. So I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to open them up like it's an alligator that's about to eat something. And I'm going to use my fingers along with the scissors. I'm going to keep my scissors away from my fingers, but holding down the clay. And I'm going to go ahead and cut the shape that I want. Right now, I'm going to cut a rectangle. So I'm going to basically cut off all these edges, make them look a little bit pretty. And then we'll make it look more like an oval in a second. So I'm cutting this out the way I want it. Now, if you don't want to do yours like mine, that is totally okay. You are the artist here. Maybe you can make yours a little bit more creative because sometimes I'm not the most creative. So now I have something that looks like a rectangle. I'll go ahead and give y'all a chance to catch up if you want. 
and give me a thumbs up when you are ready to continue. Okay, thank you for the thumbs up. So to make this less of a rectangle, more of an oval, I'm going to give my edges a little bit of a cut and kind of cut off some of these edges. By this point, you could actually probably snip it off now. You don't even have to drag it on the table. And go ahead and cut off those edges. Now, if you're noticing that you're getting cracks or maybe you just want the edges to look a little bit more pretty, you can dip your finger in the water and maybe try to repair some of those areas with your finger and a little bit of water. You definitely don't want to get this guy saturated um, with too much water um, because it'll start to feel like cheese and that will be really hard to work with. But you can use the water to kind of make these edges a little bit more round and because this uh, clay dries fast, they'll give you just a little bit more time to work with it too. So I went ahead and I used my fingers to cover up any cracks and I'm also making the sides a little bit more round. So the cool thing about this is that I get to wear it as a necklace. Um, for right now, you can take your extra clay and kind of just move it to the side. Um, you don't need it right now. And this clay is a little bit too hard to work with, so we're not gonna be able to attach anything to here um, at this time. But because we're gonna make this into a necklace, we need a hole for the string to go through. So I usually um, find a spot at the top. I will take my tool, my needle, and I will go ahead and gently kind of pull it through. But just doing that is not enough because that hole is too small for the yarn that we're gonna use. I usually take my needle and then I'm just gonna move it around a little bit. That will make the hole a little bit bigger and that will make it just a little bit easier for the string. So here's the part that is all about you. We are going to use hieroglyphics to put our initial on this necklace. Um, when the string is obviously called the string, if that's the necklace part, we can call this cartouche the pendant of the necklace. On the pendant, you're going to write um, your initial of either your first name or your last name. So my first name starts with J, so I could do a snake, but my last name starts with B, so I could do the foot. Now you could do both. You could even do the whole name. Maybe your name is Kim and it's just three letters so you could put three hieroglyphics. It's up to you, I'll let you make that judgment. I think that I'm going to do the snake just because I think it's a little bit more interesting than a foot. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to gently, gently, gently kind of carve away my design. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but I will kind of just take my time and I'm going to draw that snake. As you're carving, you may notice that you're getting kind of these like little bit of debris. Um, it kind of looks like little chunks of just kind of sticking on. Try to get those off um, for now because when this dries, it'll be a little bit easier to paint if we don't have those little kind of furry guys hanging on. You can also add designs to yours. Maybe you wanna outline it, maybe you wanna do some dots. It's kind of up to you what you wanna do, but um, just think about how it might look when we start painting. So now that I have this the way I want, double check and make sure that your hole is still good and that you can put a string through it. Um, you can flip it over and I need you to write your real initials. So please don't write hieroglyphics, but on the other side, I need you to write your initials. So it's the first letter of your first name and then the first letter of your last name. For me, it's J and then B for boat field. And that is all you need to do. Maybe just brush away some of those little furries that are hanging on and place this on the back counter and that way I know you will done. And then you can choose one of our free activities.